Hello, hello, I'm Teha, and today I am officially becoming a YouTuber. I mean, are you really a YouTuber if you haven't done one of these setup tour videos? This is the third studio slash workspace that I've moved into since I started down this career path. But the first that I officially don't have to also share and call my bedroom. So this video has been long overdue, and let's jump right into it. Let's start with the question that I get asked the most. Those of you guys following me over at Instagram and Twitter saw some of the behind the scenes and renovation process when I first moved into here. And the number one question that I got asked was, what color paint did I go with? One of my favorite channels to watch since I've discovered them last year has been a channel called Becky and Chris. And I've just absolutely been in love with their darker themed aesthetics. I think it looks really good on camera. And after seeing it in person, I honestly think it looks even better in person. These walls were painted with the midnight color from Benjamin Moore, which Becky used in one of her older videos, I believe. And I'm in love with it even after four months. If you guys are planning on going with a darker color studio like this, I will say keep in mind that you guys are going to want a lot, and I mean like a lot of light. Just regular lamps and bulbs don't really cut it for me anymore. I pretty much have my studio lights running 24 seven, just because the dark paint really just sucks any kind of light that hits against it. So keep that in mind. But check out Becky and Chris, they're an awesome channel and they're also an amazing couple. They're a couple goals for me. But speaking of goals, let's talk about your internet security goals. This video was sponsored by Dashlane. As an ex-software engineer that used to work with endpoint management, it still baffles me how many people stick with default passwords or passwords that are around eight characters in length. And also just the fact that websites still allow for this. In today's day and age with everything being online and digital, it is absolutely critical that you guys have strong passwords. And the number one thing you can do to increase your password strength is to simply make them longer. I personally always try to make my passwords at least 25 characters in length whenever possible. And you definitely shouldn't be reusing any old passwords. Now, of course, memorizing hundreds of complex passwords is impossible. And this is where Dashlane comes in. Dashlane is a password manager that can not only generate randomized strong passwords, but also saves and autofills all your passwords and login information on the websites you browse so you don't have to memorize hundreds of complex passwords. They have both a desktop and mobile app so all your passwords are always synced whether you're at home or on the go. Even if Dashlane were to get hacked, your passwords are still safe as all your passwords are decrypted locally on your device. Using a password manager like Dashlane already puts your internet security practices above the average person. So head on over to dashlane.com slash types to try out Dashlane for free and additionally, use code TEATTYPES for 50% off if you do want to upgrade to their premium plan to gain additional features such as their built-in VPN and dark web monitoring services. Once again, thank you to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Thankfully, this place has a decent amount of windows. Throughout the day, I can get plenty of natural lighting in the room, and since all the windows are on a single wall, it's fairly easy to control and shape. Most of the time, I have these poly silk that I got custom made from the LA rag house up as curtains. They're not the prettiest, but I like to use natural lighting whenever I can for my photography, and these are fantastic for diffusion. For video purposes, I'll generally have blackout curtains up. These are just simple ones from Amazon. I'll have links to everything that I can find down in the description box below. All right, so by the windows, this is what my YouTube video recording setup looks like. I recently upgraded to the Canon C300 Mark III from my A-cam, and the Sigma Art 18-35 f2.8 lens lives on it for the majority of the time. I have it rigged out with a cage from Bright Tangerine and attached is a small HD 702 monitor so I can see what I'm shooting better since the default monitor on the camera is a bit small. The main tripod that I use is the Flotec 75 with the Sackler FSB8 fluid head and it's a game changer. It's so easy to change the height with this tripod and you've probably seen it on a lot of other YouTube channels. Here we have an Uplift V2 standing disc. This is 60 inches in length with their bamboo finish. Uplift this and this out for free, so thank you guys Uplift, you guys are awesome. I do have another Uplift desk that I purchased many years ago that I use for streaming, which we'll get to later in this video, but I absolutely encourage everyone to get a standing desk if possible, as it does greatly help with productivity and ergonomics. This one here is kind of an all-purpose desk that I use for a variety of things. I take a lot of my Instagram pictures on here, as well as some of the overhead B-roll shots for the YouTube videos. Which brings us to this beefy boy. Shoutouts to Random Frank P for helping me figure out how to rig all this. This is the Matthews Minimax Boom, and it is essentially a C-stand on steroids. And the reason why I went with such a big stand is because as of my last video, 
I have been filming all of my overhead shots with the Canon C70. I have it clamped here with a Maffellini clamp and it has been pretty much spot on color matching with the C300 and I'll usually have other things clamped onto here like my mic for example or overhead lights. All of my audio is recorded with the Sennheiser MKH416 shotgun mic. I only have one of these in the studio so I'll usually move it back and forth from my live streaming setup to my YouTube filming setup. I do live stream every Tuesdays and Wednesdays over at Twitch, so go follow me there if you already haven't. In past studios, I used to attach acoustic foam panels all over the walls. But this time around, I decided to forego it, as in my opinion, it always gets a little messy and it becomes a hassle especially when you move. So instead, I have decided to opt to hanging acoustic blankets in areas as needed. I also have some acoustic blankets on a T-bar on wheels since I have a bit of floor space to work with now. And I have around two of these that I just move around as needed and they also double up for bouncing or cutting light since they come with a black and white side. Okay, let's move on to lighting. For the past couple of months, I've been experimenting with a Swiss book lighting setup, using one of the acoustic blankets as a bounce and then an IntelliTech frame for a second layer of diffusion. I have the frames attached to some rolling stands from Impact so I can move it around as needed as I shoot my YouTube videos from different angles or even just for photography. I used to light everything with the Aperture 120D Mark II for the past couple of years. But for a setup of this size now with two layers of diffusion, it's not strong enough so I recently upgraded to the Aperture 300D Mark II for my key light. As for practicals, I've got some Aperture MC lights hiding behind some of the keyboards back there on the shelf. And of course, another question that I get asked often is what are those tubes? Those are the Astera Titan tubes. If you've seen any music videos with LED tubes, chances are they're most likely from Astera. They're an industry standard. They're definitely not cheap, but when it comes to color accuracy, battery life, and just the number of effects you can do, the controllability of these with DMX, it's pretty insane. I've definitely been trying to get my money's worth out of them as they are overkill for YouTube, but I use them everywhere whenever I can. In terms of furniture in the studio, I don't have too much. I've had this bookshelf here for a while now. This is from Wayfair. I'm still not entirely sure what to put on here as decor, but I've just kind of always had some keyboards on display, as well as some other tidbits from some other interests and hobbies that I have. Over on the opposite side of the room, I've got three gallon cabinets from Ikea, and it just so happens that they fit perfectly in this little crevice of the room. And this is where I store most of my keyboard stuff. In the first cabinet, I keep all of my switches, cables, stabilizers, extra PCBs and plates, and items that I probably grab a little less often. All these containers here I got from the container store and they come in a variety of sizes which works quite well for stacking. The second cabinet is for storing all of my keycap sets and desk mats, at least what I can fill. I mostly have GMK sets but I do have my fair share of other brands and luckily desk mats are the perfect length of the cabinet. The last cabinet has some of my small camera equipments like batteries, cables, spigots, and whatnot. And I also keep some extra desk mats down there. I'm really starting to run out of space for all of this. Okay, onto the final piece of the room, the editing and streaming station. The desk is from Uplift once again, but it's with the 72 inch walnut top. And this is something I've actually purchased a couple years ago, but I still absolutely love the color and the desk is still working fine. After a little over a decade, I finally invested in some nice speakers and this is the latest addition to my studio. These are the Kanto Tuck speakers along with the Kanto stands, and they sound as good as they look. While they're not the most neutral sounding for monitoring, they definitely provide for nice listening sessions and the connectivity options for these are abundant. I can easily connect these to a turntable if I wanted to in the future, my TV, or even Bluetooth for whenever I need to. I've always been a PC guy. I won't go listing all the specs on video, but I'll have the link to the PC parts in the description box below. And this one's pretty special as I built it with Christopher Yi, a great friend of mine. As you can see, I've gone for a triple monitor setup. And before you guys roast me about mixing curved and non-curved and my bezel sizes, hear me out, okay? This monitor here on the left is the ISO CG279X, which I use for color accurate work and media consumption. On the right, I've got two 165Hz monitors. The bottom one is the ASUS ROG Swift PG279QZ, and on top is a MSI Optics Mag 272C QR, which I was gifted. The other two I've purchased myself. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of this triple monitor setup, but the longer I've streamed, I found it nicer to have multiple monitors, specifically for streaming purposes. They're not the greatest looking monitors, but the ISO is absolutely a powerhouse when it comes to color accurate work and I've had no complaints with the 165 Hz monitors. I was gifted one of them. I'm not gonna go just throw that away and get a new one just to make my monitors match. So that's why it is the way it is. 
I've got two of my monitors mounted to the Jarvis arms from Fully, and I use the Vivo monitor arm for the top monitor. For streaming, I use a Canon EOS R as my face cam with the RF 15-35 f2.8, and I have it rigged up to a Veripole system that I have along this back wall. I feel like Veripoles aren't mentioned enough on other channels here on YouTube, but they're great for freeing up real estate off the ground as they're quite sturdy and you can really hang a lot of weight off of them either horizontally or vertically. I've got a Manfrotto magic arm clamped onto the Vivo stand which holds the mount for the mic for when I stream. The RME Babyface Pro is my current audio interface of choice for recording. I've used other great interfaces in the past like the Apollo Twin, and while some of them do look nicer, I have been much happier using the Babyface. I get asked quite often on stream how I mount my camera overhead, so here it is finally. I've got a good old C-stand from Newer that sits to the side of my desk. While you can just use a regular C-stand, I have upgraded the extended arm to something slightly beefier, the Impact Boom Arm, as I do have some heavy gear attached here. I have a second Canon EOS R for my overhead angle, and this one has the RF 24-70 f2.8 lens. In order to hold all this, I have a super clamp that has a spigot that's then attached to a Manfrotto ball head. Super clamps are super handy, and I have another one off to the side that holds an Astera tube just to help with lighting my desk and a little of my head for separation. Do make sure to add counterweights as needed if you guys do use C-stands for overhead mounting. You definitely don't want your gear to fall over and break. I just got a couple sandbags hanging off the end here. I've got an Alex drawer from Ikea here off to the side that has some more keyboard components. I keep most of the tools needed for building a keyboard in here, but other than that, that's about it for the studio. I didn't go super into detail into every component for the sake of time, but let me know down in the comments below if there's any area that you want me to separate out into a dedicated video, or if there's anything that I missed that you guys would want to see. This video was a long time coming, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, see ya nerds.